Tony, people, of course, nervous mm -hmm. after just getting through Hurricane Helene. So when we look at this storm here, we're talking about storm surge and wind. You know, we've learned a lot, right? Just yeah. in the last 10 days. These, these yeah, lessons are right, fresh. Right. And I think if you've been watching our coverage and been watching folks saying, I didn't expect this. Mm -hmm. I was surprised. Mm -hmm. I wish I had gone and left. Yeah. This is good advice for this storm. And you're probably going to get that no matter what, because we're tracking Mo it's mm -hmm. different than it, it's this different is, than you said Hawaii. coming down to the hour. Yeah, there's some folks that are going to be surprised how much surge there is. And there are going to be some folks that are going to be surprised that they're not getting surge at all. Right. Uh, and that's the thing. Now, the satellite's not coming up, but I just got another update. It's now up to 150. Oh, so we went from 125 to 150. So now Milton is almost a category. F it's it's six miles away from category five. Pressure's down to 940 millibars, uh, you know, not as much of a concern for us. This is still the forecast, uh, but you start to be concerned about folks down in northern Yucatan, Progreso here, uh, the Merida area. This is heading very close to the coast, and the stronger the winds get, they're going to extend a little farther away from the center of the storm. So they're going to start to get some winds here, and the surge forecast keeps going up for the Yucatan. Now, they're not as vulnerable to surge here because the, the ocean is deeper. So it's harder for the storm to scoop up a lot of water. They were forecasting a three to five foot surge. They're probably going to have to increase that, maybe, uh, you know, four to six or four to eight even. Uh, for us, we're still expecting the storm to enter an area of strong upper level shear. So it should be stretched and weakening as it approaches our coast. But because it's starting at such a high level, sure, it, it could weaken, but it's going to take a long time for this to wind down. By the way, interesting enough here in the forecast from the NHC, this is going to get so sheared apart that they don't even have this as a hurricane past Florida, just an area of low pressure. They don't think this is even going to be tropical by the time it gets. So we're kind of in this transition zone, which does work in our favor. You don't want a category four storm or three storm to with a very small eye. To, we saw that in Charlie, right? I mean, you got a lot of destruction in a very small area. You want to take those winds, spread them out to mo more folks. Sure, that's maybe not as good, but what that does is it drops the wind speed down so you don't get as much of this serious damage. Because 150 mile an hour winds, they do damage. Now, 125 is where it's supposed to be, according to this forecast, Wednesday afternoon here still west of us and continuing to weaken. So maybe making landfall at 120, 115, maybe even 110. Major hurricane starts at 111. So if it's at 110, I don't feel any better about that than 115. It's really the same storm. Hurricane watches are up. No surprise here. Of course, it's all about the track. For Helene, we were all on the strong side of the storm and everyone got a surge. For Milton, where it makes landfall on the coast will determine who gets an onshore flow and a surge at and just south of the landfall point and who just north of the eye gets very little in terms of surge. The wind would push the water away. So it's all about the track. And although we will know by tomorrow, well, I think by tomorrow we'll be able to take some parts of the coast out of the, the danger zone. When you're talking about actually trying to pin down the exact point of landfall, that's not going to happen until a couple of hours before the landfall actually occurs. So the latest number from numbers from the Hurricane Center, worst case scenario for the bay is if it goes northern Pinellas and Pasco, then you get 8 to 12. If it goes south of the bay, this number doesn't happen. If it goes into Sarasota, Venice, Englewood, uh, you're not going to get that surge. You're going to get some water rise ahead, but then the winds start pushing the water out and we get a reverse surge in the bay. The Nature Coast wouldn't get 5 to 10. Now, if it tracks farther north, you could get these numbers for sure. Similarly, farther south, if it does track into Sarasota or maybe over towards Charlotte County, well, then this 8 to 12 moves down with the eye. This number will follow the eye and points just south. It's placed near the bay now because that's kind of the average of all the models. A lot of these are clustering. You know, they're not this precise, but it's certainly, I don't want to see this. This is, this is not good. You don't want all of these clustering right here north. You don't want this track. Hurricane Center is better. Obviously, these down for us here at Fort Myers. I don't want to send this to Fort Myers. This is the last thing they want to see. But there are still some models down to the south. That's a better situation for us because surge would not be an issue if this thing goes to Fort Myers. Not for us. It would be for southwest Florida. Suddenly, Naples and Fort Myers are on big alert. So the tropical storm force winds start approaching the area late Wednesday. 
Strong tropical storm force winds don't arrive until after 4 p.m. based on the current timing from the Hurricane Center, which will be updated at 11 a.m. So until 4 o'clock on Wednesday, Wednesday is going to be OK. Now, it'll be raining, I think, all day, but I don't think the conditions get dangerous until after 4 o'clock. So if you still make a last minute decision to get out of the way because you're in an evacuation zone, I would not travel to a far destination on Wednesday. You don't want to be going probably to Orlando or Tallahassee or Miami at that point. But you can travel in our area just close just to get out of the water. Remember, for most folks, the evacuation is maybe just a couple of miles. That's really all you need to do, maybe even a mile, just to get out of that flood zone, and you're fine. You can stay here for the wind. The wind will be all right. There'll be trees down, that kind of thing. But you can ride this out with the wind. We just don't want you in a flood zone. That's the danger. Strongest part of the storm Wednesday evening, Wednesday night, but 8 o'clock Thursday, it is done. So this is the European. It's okay in terms of the track. I don't think this is the track that's going to happen, but I like what it's showing with the rain here filling in. This is Wednesday morning. The center is still offshore. No one's getting hurricane force winds, but all of us are already getting rain and look how it's stretched. The north side of the storm is a lot rainier. This is the center, much less rain to the south. This is the shear that this storm will be will be experiencing. Unfortunately, if it does go just south of Tampa, the strongest part of the eye wall, the red here, would go right through Pinellas and Hillsborough County. So wind would be a concern. You could see a lot of power outages across the area along and just near the, where the landfall location is. Today and tomorrow, good for preps. Wednesday is that wet day. And then the weekend, for those without power, oh, this is exactly what we need. Cooler temperatures and comfortable overnights down into the 60s.